Welcome to The Coffee Shop, everybody. This is your host and barista, Eric. And uh, here at The Coffee Shop, I am posting a video today because I want to get your input. I want to get some feedback from the community. Use the, com the comments section below because I want you guys to give me uh, some, some better insight, some just like developmental ideas um, on this indicator that I'm working on. And it's called the RSI Kill Zone, right? This is going to be the most elaborate RSI that I create. There is really nothing faster than this one. I've done a lot of checking uh, on TradingView for um, indicators like the RSI and momentum indicators that will do all of the things that this one will do. This one is truly going to be one of a kind. As good as my Heiken Ashi Algo indicator is, that is great for you people who like using um, you know, Heiken Ashi candles in the RSI. Great for you. Uh, but this one, I'm sorry, this one is going to top them all. And I want... Um, yeah, like I said, I want to try and get some feedback from you guys and uh, just see. Let's get comfortable here, right? So I have my desk up high. I'm going to drop myself down low. Just kind of let's just sit back a little bit and get comfy right here at the coffee shop. Hang on. You know what we got to do? We got to pull up our, you know, no advertising. There we go. And uh, we're just going to pull this up here, right? We got a little cup of whatever we're using for the day. And I want you to just take a look at this um, this RSI that I'm working on. It's called the kill zone, okay? Now, what it does is it draws this channel here, okay? It draws this channel here. And you can see the channel starts. Let me just use my arrow because I like using that, right? And this is, this is not only a momentum indicator. It also allows you to understand the limitations of the range of the RSI, okay? It is not... Uh, 70, 30, it is not 80, 20, it is not 100, 100, uh, okay? None of that, okay? Uh, in this RSI, you could see that I have a midline showing, like you could barely see it. I have the plus 10 and minus 10 showing here, right? Here's the minus 10, here is the plus 10, right? You could see it there. But you can see that they are not exactly relevant. And I've always known and just haven't been able to, until now, been able to figure out a way to find the actual range of the market, right? When usually when the RSI gets down to minus 10 or up to 10, like you see it here, it, it kind of collapses in its movement, okay? But what I've been trying to do is figure out when is this not relevant, okay? And to be honest with you, it's never relevant. The 10, the 20, the 30, the 40, the 50, all of those levels, they are not relevant uh, when it comes to the movement of the RSI. The only thing that's relevant is what is the RSI doing with its moving average above or below zero? In my case, zero, because I have mine plotted to show zero for the center line, right? Um, so with that, I've been able to create an RSI that draws an automatic channel, okay? And this channel is the range. And the range is colored determined by the overall momentum of the market. So this is the first oscillator that can tell you the actual momentum of the market that is coming up. So for example, if you're in a downtrend, okay, it'll start turning green, right? It'll turn green. It doesn't mean you're going long yet. It's just telling you, hey, you got long momentum, like they're pushing in, okay? That's what it's doing. And you can see like you have this, this downtrend coming, like happening, and all of a sudden it starts turning green here. Let's, these background colors right here, these background blue colors. This is basically overbought and oversold. That's what it is. But I'm going to remove that because it's not, it's not truly relevant. And I want to get rid of that. Right. Um, so, so what I want to focus on here is this channel here. Let's kind of do this right here. So you got one here and you got the other one here, right? You could see the top and the bottom of the channel. But if you look backwards, right, you could see that this level is not the same level that the channel was the whole time. So the, the number 10 or whatever this number is, is not relevant. So if I just drag this straight across, you can see the channel is no longer here. Now it's down here, right? Then it moves and it's up here and it's over and it just keeps shifting. The channel itself keeps shifting, right? As this channel is low, the RSI is going to make longs. As the channel is high, it's going to make shorts, right? So as it's high, it changes to red showing you that you have to look for short trades. And when it's green, you should be looking for long trades. And if you look at what the what the price is doing here, right after this point, right, see it changes color here. If we go to the close, you should be able to start taking shorts below this level, okay? And that's exactly what happens. Price collapses, never starts coming, never comes back to this level again. 
And uh, well, let's see here. Uh, at this point, you were in an uptrend, right? And it changed to red here. So at the close of this candle, this is a confirmation of your shorts, right? So you look for shorts here, and then you have a confirmation of shorts down there. And look what happens, right? I drew this one here, okay? Price moves up, tells you to start taking shorts, comes down, and it hits that same level again. This one level turns into support, then it turns into resistance, again, resistance and support, again, right? See, the oscillator is telling you many, many hours ahead of time, like this is way ahead of time, right? It's telling you what? That this level is relevant, it, what? 85 hours ahead of time, five days ahead of time, okay? So let me just kind of get rid of this. Now, what, what I wanna get feedback on is how can we make this tool a little bit more effective, okay? And let me tell you a little bit more about another couple of features that it has, all right? It has this control line, okay? See this right here, this white line. I'm going to I'm going to change this so it's a little bit thicker and I call it the momentum point of control or if you want to call it the liquidity control line whatever you want to call it, right? Um I'll come up with a proper name for it, right? This line basically if your RSI and your moving average are below this line, okay? Anywhere below this line. As long as they are lined up below this line, you have downwards momentum. If your RSI is below this line and your moving average is not, you can scalp short if your momentum is carrying down, but you do not have a full on short trade. So for example, here you cross below, like at this point, sorry, not here, but here. At this point, you are lined up with your RSI and moving average below the control line and your momentum is pulling down, right? And that happens on this candle right here, right? Oops, sorry, they're right there. And again, take a look at this level. Okay, what you want is basically a high and low of that level, right? Here's the high, here's the close, and look what happens in the future, okay? This becomes a support level, support and resistance level, okay? The RSI is drawing out these awesome indications for you, right? So even though you get this level here, look what happens in the future, right? Um, I'll explain these breakouts of this channel in just a second. Uh, Price comes down, RSI comes back up, and it breaks its own channel, but it does not break this channel. So you have nothing in front of you. This is a breakout of momentum, and there's nothing stopping your price. So you can keep going to this level. Right? You can just keep going to that level. It's it's a, relev it's a relative level that we want to stop at, right? You can call it a key level. Then the RSI, right? I'm sorry, price breaks through this level, and you're already above this, okay? So that's basically telling you, you have broken the level of momentum that works against you, and you have broken a support level. So now you are in long trades, okay? So, and it comes down, and look what happens here. You come down inside this zone, and the RSI is inside this zone, touching the top of the previous level, which just happens to be right around 10 right around positive 10, right? So the RSI comes down, touches this 10 level, dips below it just a little bit, but you were just inside of this zone, okay? So you, you don't wanna take shorts at this point because you're just inside the zone, right? Um, RSI breaks out through here, right? See this green line? RSI breaks out through here and you close above that same level. That is a pro positive breakout. It's telling you that you are going to continue outside of this pivot level, whatever the case may be. And then of course, there if you look really small, there is a high here on price, okay? There's a little high right there and you broke above it, okay? So if you're able to calculate the highs and the lows as price is moving along, you can see that you just closed above a high and the RSI broke outside of this support and resistance channel. And it's all happening in live time. Like this doesn't take, uh, you know, several days for this channel to appear. The channel is already there. It's right here. Okay. It follows the RSI. It's at the same point of the RSI. And then let's just wait for the RSI to break above it right there. See, RSI breaks above it. The channel is here. It's like, oh, it's all of this. Okay. And th this channel is just really a monster. It's giving you the actual range that you need to be outside of. Anything inside of this channel is range trading. So you trade to the extremes of that range. Now, it used to be that um, people would say you have to go, you know, above 30 for your RSI. If you, you know, I'm sorry, below 30 for your RSI or above 60 for the RSI, that's when you're getting true momentum, like whatever the case may be. I don't believe any of that. 
I believe that the RSI has its own channel that it creates its own momentum that it creates and it does it in live time, like in real time. And here it is, like you can see it now, right? Um, so let me describe these breakouts for you at this point, right? Uh, let's get rid of this. Okay. Uh, cut this off right here. And then let's try and find where I was because uh, there were a bunch of, ah, here we go. This is what I wanted to show you. Um, these breakouts are really just awesome. I marked all of these areas where the RSI is breaking outside of the range that it creates, that channel, right? There's that channel, that background color is red, and then it changes to green, right? Um, this just means that at this point, you have bullish momentum pushing in, but you don't have the long trade yet because the histogram, look, it's still, the histogram still to the downside. Your RSI and your moving average are still below the control line. You need to get above the control line to be in long trades, right? So this whole thing is a downtrend. Your RSI, all this activity is taking place below all of this, right? So that would mean that this is a pullback and this is the extent of the pullback. So when you get this pullback, you can find the first high of it, right? Here's the high. You won't know that the high is there until you get a low, right? So look at the last high. That's this price. You need to take shorts below that because this is saying you still are in a downtrend market cross below that level and you should be able to take shorts, right? You get up to it, you take shorts. And if you look for another high, obviously your highs are, you, you constantly get new highs all the time, right? So it doesn't really matter. As long as you cross below your moving average and favorably break outside the channel, as long as you are below that price level, okay? And it happens, you close below that price level, right? And this is your re-entry for a short. And it's as simple as this. Where is your RSI and the moving average crossing each other? Are they on the downside uh, below zero? Okay, great. If they are, are they below the control line? Great. Is the histogram making a step down? It doesn't have to be below zero. The histogram just has to be making a step down. That means your momentum is moving down. The velocity is moving down. The volume is moving to the downside. And you have now broken back into the correct direction of the average RSI. The R RSI is below zero. So you want to you want to be crossing down the average, right? You want to you don't want to be higher than the average, you want to be lower than the average. And that's your re-entry. So and uh let's see. So here we go. So this is every single time that you can re-enter the market, right? uh and get a continuation move so you can see like how many times this happens and after this point you, you end up getting out of the market at some point uh let's say you break back inside the range it's a perfect example here right uh you're inside the range with your rsi and you break out to the downside okay so at this point you were ranging in your rsi the rsi broke above zero right but your control line is in between the rsi and the moving average but your control line is there. So you cannot take this long trade. Again, the RSI comes down, bounces off of it, makes a move up. And people start taking the long trades. They start taking long trades. This is a bad idea because you can see this histogram, I'm sorry, the background is red and your control line is in between the RSI and the moving average. Your RSI and moving average have to be on one side of this control line, depending on what side you're on determines which way you're trading. And this background is telling you that you are looking for shorts. So you want to get below the control line and your histogram make a step down, right? RSI crosses below zero. You have the potential for a short here, right? Now, if this is if you're range trading, then fine. Take this, find your support and resistance level and get out right there, right? So this line was made on this price level. Let's see. The uh, level was made here on this price level. So this would be the price level that you can get out, okay? You just look, so you made a nice move down, okay? This is a lineup for a downtrend, but you're in the range, so find out where this line was created. This line was created right here on this price level, and that's right here. And you see that the RSI makes it down to that side, okay? Now, why am I saying this? I, I see that it's played out in front of me, that's fine. Um, but when you're ranging, right, when price is ranging, you never know which way the breakout is going to take place. You never know. Using the old versions of the RSI that I've created, as well as the older ones that are in TradingView and the other ones that I see, 
If you break above 10, positive 10, or in the regular setup, if you break above 60, people start taking long trades. Bad idea because everything is not lining up correctly, right? So here you break below minus 10, but not only that, you also break below this channel that it's making. So this right here, this is your entry for a short, like a nice short, okay? This candle right here. And for me, you know what I do? I use the RSI formula. I'm going over here, right? Just to do the formula, the value is, I don't know, let's just pick, uh, you know, one to two, right? We're just gonna go one to two. And that brings me down here, right? Um, so, but this is basically telling you that you're going to break out to the downside. So you want to get a nice breakout. So, uh, you just find your previous level. Okay. That price level. Remember, find that price level. This will be your range Break out below that level. Here's your, here's your RSI breaking that level, right? Breaking your range. You didn't break that level yet. And then the RSI breaks through that range. Again, the histogram makes a step down. You're below your control line with everything, and you cross that price level. This is an entry for a short, okay? And then as price is playing out, this move takes place again, okay? Uh, let's see here. Yeah, so right here, the histogram took a step down while you are while your RSI and the moving average are below. This isn't necessarily an, a, a short entry. I want to get to where the RSI crosses below its average, and it's right here, right? RSI crosses down below its average at this point. I want to step down in the histogram right there. This is the entry for a short, right? So you can see like it's kind of ranging a little bit, re-entry for a short, right? And then it does this pullback on this candle, re-entry for a short. Does another pullback, you cross below again, like you're you're below this channel, okay? And um, so yeah, so, so this is where I am with this. And like every single one of these red lines, these red vertical lines, this is the re-entry for a short. And from what I could see here, there are no entries for long positions in this at all. And this is the key factor of this thing. Here, the RSI crosses up.